Hello everyone, today I'm continuing organising Sims 2 custom content to absolute perfection and this time it's all about build by objects. Please bear in mind that this video was originally intended to be part of my previous video, however it was all too long so it has been split up into two. So if you haven't already I highly recommend that you check out my video on the CAS items first because that contains more of the general tips applicable to all kinds of custom content whereas this video will be more focused on the specifics of build by objects. Um, and also just that I apologise if anything in this video doesn't quite make sense um, simply because it wasn't intended to be a standalone video. So just bear that in mind, bear with it and I really hope you pick up some useful tips. So now I'm moving on to the objects and I've opened all of the links in a new tab and to be honest this pack has actually turned out to be a nightmare because a lot of people have converted the same stuff so there's quite a few things to decide between and it's one of those that you have to be careful that you haven't got duplicates for example there's this bed here here and here that's three same with this bathroom one two oh and then there's the bath on its own here so when this kind of thing happens i actually download them all and like with clothes i open them up in game so i can compare them see which ones are better and also which recolors are what i want because the great thing about conversions is that usually the meshes and the like texture maps i guess i'll call it don't know what it's called i'm not a retexturer are often the same so that means that say if I like one of the swatches in this bedroom but overall I prefer the set in this bedroom what I can do is I can actually extract those um, textures and apply them to those instead Just popping in with another little tip and it's one I've already shared in my downloading the Sims 4 Paranormal stuff into The Sims 2 and that is when this happens when you get a link to box and you cannot download it. It's a really simple fix and all you need to do is click up here where the URL is and change the www to app and press enter. It will reload and now you will be able to download the file. So again, I'm making use of that temporary folder in my downloads folder and I've dumped in all of the things that are duplicates. Something has made my life easier because one of the sets are broken. Um, this one, which was a bedroom and bathroom set is unfortunately broken. But to be honest, it looks like everything that was in there has been done by other creators. So it's not a huge loss. So I'm going to go into my game now and pick which living chair, bed, bath and plants that I would like to use. So I have compared all the duplicates in my game and decided which ones I want to keep. I've made a note of them and also any recolors of other ones that I want to keep. So what I mean by that is say for example there's two plants here that did the same. I might prefer this mesh but actually there is one recolor swatch that I really like in this one that that doesn't have and because they should be the same kind of mesh and texture map as I said I should be able to still use this texture on this mesh. I'll show you how to do that when I get to that point. So I've started fresh on a new day, I've deleted all of the zip files and everything out of my game downloads so now what I'm going to do is go through each item one at a time and merge them together and I'll uh, pop back in and let you know any tips I have on the way and then once they are all in there, all the compressed and merged packages, I will show you what I do to really be a perfectionist with the item stats and how you can easily change things like that in Simpia. The first item is this chair. And there was actually external recolors. So I just want to make a little note here that when things like that happen, the separate recolors made by somebody else, I do still merge them together with the mesh um, to keep things as compact as possible. So I've downloaded the chair and its recolors and they're on zip files on my desktop. So now I'm copying them into 
the temporary folder on my desktop and very similarly to the process of the clothes now I am compressing them and merging them so now I have my first merge package. I have made a new folder in my newly reorganized CC for this stuff pack. Now it is true that I might end up deciding that I don't want a separate folder for each stuff pack because there's not as many items in them. But to start with, while I haven't made my mind up about that, I am going to separate them into folders because it is much easier to put things together than it is to go have to go through pulling things apart, trying to remember which one should be in which file. So I'm going to keep things nice and separate. And when I've done them all or made a clear decision, then I can always just put them all in one Sims 3 stuff pack folder if I so choose. But at the moment, the more organized, the better. Sometimes items don't have any recolors and that means there's a mesh and it's one color in a package together and therefore obviously there's no need to merge anything together. However, I always rename files in this case. You still want to maintain that renaming convention wherever possible. Since a lot of things can be merged and you make a file for the merge package anyway, um, that's why the bulk rename utility hasn't come up in this video. But for whatever reason, if you've got a lot of standalone things, for example, my hair mesh folder, that's just, just for meshes. So I will probably run bulk rename utility on that. But largely, I just either use the CC merger to give my merge packages a good name or manually rename the odd file like this that doesn't have any recolors. So just bear that in mind. Even if there's just a the one file, still make sure it's got a good name. So I'm going to show you something a little bit more advanced now and that is what to do when you have chosen a mesh to keep but like recolors from another one. So I have chosen to keep this version of the plant because it has a wider variety of swatches and they are all very nice. However, this one is part of the bathroom set, which I love, and therefore it matches all of the other items in the bathroom. So I would still like to have those recolors. So I am going to show you how you can take those textures only and apply them to this mesh instead. So what I'm going to do is I am going to open each file in the one that I like the textures of but I'm not keeping in SimPE. And I am also going to open the mesh that I am keeping. Do note that meshes for objects always have one recolor assigned to them or at least they do usually. So here, this one is the mesh that I am keeping. And if I go to here and see the texture image, and to click on the one that is not the alpha, I can now see the texture image that it is using. Now, if I do the same for the other one, which has textures I want to take out, I can have a look. And as you can see by doing that, you can see that where the parts are in the texture is exactly the same on both. That means it is compatible to do this. I can apply the texture of one to another. Some things may look the same, but are not. Take the bed, for example. This bed and this bed look the same, right? They actually didn't have the same texture map at all. And in which case you either have to choose one or just keep both meshes with their recolors assigned to them individually. This plant, we can do this on. So I can now close the mesh that I am keeping and in the file that has a texture I want to take out, I right click on the texture that I want to keep and press extract. And I'm just going to save that exactly how it is to my desktop. Then I'm going to go on the left and open object workshop. It might not automatically be there for you, um, but there's, you know, you can find it, you can go to window and open it that way, you know. Once you have that open, you go to open and that's when you want to open the mesh of the file that we want to put the texture on. Just open it, click recolor under task and click start. Now I need to save this as a package. So I'm just going to call this ls1 because it doesn't really matter because it's going to get merged anyway but it's just to let me know that it's the first recolor from the plant by lady simpler and then click save then that it opens automatically as you can see this is a file that opens what you can do now is right click on this because this is what you want to replace and click replace 
and then choose this file that's on your desktop, which was the texture we extracted and just click open. Just say yes to reload it and there you go. This is actually really similar and I could have probably got away with just using the other swatch for this one. But hey, the more the merrier sometimes. And then just commit that and save. And there you have it. That is one texture assigned to the other mesh. So I can now put this extra recolor in the folder that we're going to be merging in a minute. And now I can delete the texture that we extracted. So now I'm opening the next texture from the Lady Simpler bathroom set that I want to take out. And again, and click texture image. This time there's a lot less files because it isn't the mesh, it is just a recolor. And right click, extract, save it to my desktop exactly how it is. Start the object workshop, opening the mesh that we are recoloring, making sure recolor is selected and click start. Save it as a file that we will be editing and it's opened. And again, we right click, replace and select the recolor on the desktop, reload it, commit, okay, and save. So seriously, this might have seemed like a complex, scary thing, but it is really that easy. That's all there is to it. I will always say though, don't just assume this is going to look right. It's not a one size fits all. Make sure once you do this, you open your game and make sure you have the results you were hoping for. So now I'm just going to go off and do that last recolor for this in the same way. So I've loaded the Pleasant Household for testing purposes um, to see the results of my recolor. And as you can see, I have the plant here and these last two here are the recolors from lady simpler's bathroom set so as you can see it looks right that's a that's a texture on the original mesh and they're the ones that i have just added myself and as you can see it uh, has worked exactly as intended and um, but make sure you always check this because it might not always look so good but that's a really easy way that you can have all of the recolors you want all of the range and choices that you want without having needless duplicate meshes Meshes are usually the bigger files that take more space, so it's better to reduce that where possible. Another quick tip that I've thought of is when I am checking if a bathtub is one I want to keep, I always make sure that it can be used to wash dogs in pets. Not all bathtubs have that functionality and it can be really annoying when you've decorated a bathroom nicely and then realise you can't wash your pet dog in it. So I tend to mostly keep the ones that do have that functionality and if they don't but I really like it, I'll probably just make a little note in the description of the item that it can't be used on dogs and I'll show you how to do that later. So I have finished downloading, compressing and merging all of the Master Suite conversions and I have got a total of 26 items. What I'm going to do now is copy them into my game folder and have a look at them in game. I will have a notepad next to me and I will be writing down notes of things I want to change about them. I'll get in game and show you the kinds of things I'm going to be looking for. So this is all of the gorgeous master suite stuff i have downloaded i'm really happy with how everything looks everything's a keeper for sure but i've gone through everything and made some notes about certain things i'd like to change the things i'm looking for are if they are in the right category in buy mode if they fall under the correct category or subcategory um, if I agree with the pricing and their stats and what I mean by stats is the comfort, for example, the environment, for example. And um, so take this chair, for example, I decided that I think it should be more, more expensive. You know, it, it looks it looks like a luxury chair and it looks more like the ones on this bottom row here. So I've decided to make it more expensive. If I decided to keep the price the same, then 
perhaps those stats would be a little bit overpowered for the price range. I really don't like allowing custom content items to sort of break the economy of the game. I don't like to be able to have a beautiful house of objects with very little money. It's not. It takes out the incentive in the game to earn money to redecorate your house as you earn more money. So that's why I'm uh, particularly anal when it comes to this kind of thing. Another thing about this chair is that I would probably also change the name. The Sims 3 Master Suite Self Living Chair for The Sims 2. That's not a very nice name and I know what the, the name of the chair is in Sims 3. I also check to see what the thumbnails are like. To be honest, none of these were very bad that I noticed, um, but hopefully I can find some sort of example. You'll see what I mean when I show you in SimPE soon. So really the purpose of this to load them into the game is to really see where they fall within the Maxis objects see what's around them and that kind of lets you know how oh, actually this one's environment's too high for this price or you know what this this object looks a lot nicer than the other maxis ones around it the price needs to be bumped up a, a bit stuff like that so i've got my notes and now i will be going through them one by one in simpe and i'll show you that process now so using my newly organized cc folder i will be opening all of these one by one in SimPE because I assure you pretty much every single one will need some sort of change. I'll show you what that is in a moment. And once you have opened a file, the main thing that is necessary is to go into this object data here. Sometimes there will be multiple files in here off with the numbers on the end like this one. From what I understand at least, you can ignore these. It's only the main one the one that's named normally without these numbers. So the first thing you want to do when you've got this open in the plugin view down here is you want to change this little option here to decimal. That puts it in normal numbers that we understand. And as you can see, the first thing you can see are these various prices. From my experience, I can tell you that these depreciations are often wrong. So if you have a look at other Maxis items, you will see that all objects have an initial depreciation of 15%, a daily depreciation of 10%, and a depreciation limit of 40%. This self-depreciating, as far as I am aware, is never used. And this sale price is misleading, but extremely important. You want this number to be 35, because what that means is that with the quarter tire placement sheet that came with mansion and garden stuff, only objects that have this sale price of 35 can be placed on quarter tiles. If it's zero, then you will still only be able to move square for square, even with the sheet on. And obviously because that's not very obvious and it came out in the last packs, some custom content will have been made before it, some creators will not be aware of it, so this sale price won't be right. You want to make sure it's set to avoid that frustration when you're trying to put this nice piece of custom content on a quarter tile and you can't and don't know why. This is why. So I actually didn't want to change the price of this that isn't in my notes for this item. So I was keeping the price of 950, but I will be making sure that the depreciation is correct. So I could do that by getting the calculator open. Usually I have it open nice and big on my second monitor, but I'll squeeze it on here so you can see. So what I do firstly is I do the price, which is 1950 times 0.15. That is what the initial depreciation needs to be, 15%, but to the nearest whole number. So I will be rounding up for that. That needs to be 293. 10% is easy. So that's 195. And for the depreciation limit, I do the price times 0.4. That's 40% and that's what the depreciation limit needs to be. And there you go, that's done. You just need to make sure you press commit when you are done. If you scroll down a little bit, 
you will see some more. I tend to never touch this box. However, I have run into a problem at one time where I was building on a community lot and I was looking for this piece of CC and it wasn't there. And that's because this community sort flag was not set or correct. Usually it's fine, so I tend to just glance over it and I never really touch anything in here. If you scroll down a bit more, you'll see the catalog ratings. These are the stats I was talking about. And for this bathtub, I have wrote down that I want the comfort to be eight and the hygiene to be nine. So in this comfort box, I'll be changing that to eight and this hygiene to be nine. Commit. And there we go. That's edited. Sometimes I'll also want to change the category that it's in. And that is on this other tab called catalog sort. And this is where you change the room sort and the function sort. For this item, it's absolutely fine. Um, I tend to, when I'm checking in game, I tend to only look at the function sort because I never use the room sort. But if you're a room sorter, then this will be your priority. So I'm done with that file and I'm going to press save, open, get the folder open and open the next item. Just to show you a little example of changing the category, this little sort of thing is categorised as sculptures and I would prefer it to be in miscellaneous decor. I consider that as clutter in The Sims 2 and sculptures or something, you know, deliberately ornamental, not just clutter laying around. So you just, um, since I'm happy with the room sort and it's still a decorative function so. You just click on the drop down for overall sort and go to decorative miscellaneous commit and that's done. It's as easy as that. And now I'll show you how you can change the name of an object and its description. So if on the left here you go to catalog description CTSS, you'll see catalog description. Just click on that and there you'll have two boxes. The top box is the name of the item and the second box is the catalog description. So because this isn't a very nice name, I know that this bed in The Sims 3 is called the Private Serenade Canopy Bed. So that's what I'll be calling it. And once again, just make sure you commit and save. Luckily, all of the stuff from Master Suite had really good thumbnails, but sometimes it's not always the case. Sometimes you can end up with really... Uh, difficult to see thumbnail icons so I've just downloaded a example of a package that has what you need to do to be able to change the thumbnail purely for demonstration purposes. So when you want to try and get a better thumbnail what you do is when you open the package is you go to this resource node CRES, C-R-E-S, click on the thing in the resource list and then on this drop down next to block list click on that and then go to thumbnail extension and click on that thumbnail extension in the block list and then hopefully if the thumbnail can indeed be changed there should be something in this item box if there's not then as far as I'm aware it's just tough luck and that's as good as it can get um, but if there is all you need to do is click on it and hit delete and then commit this file and that's it make sure you save it However, in order to actually see the new thumbnail in game, you need to make sure you delete your cache files and every, all the files in your thumbnail folder. They need to be able to regenerate themselves to give you a new thumbnail. And then you should see a new improved thumbnail where it fits in the frame better. So I have edited all of the items from the Master Suite stuff to my liking they are all priced correctly with the depreciations they all are in the right categories and they all have good names and most importantly in my opinion they are all quarter tile placeable with that done the last thing i do when organizing my my objects you see is make a collection for it so i'll show you how to do that now the first thing that i need to get to make a collection file for this is download an icon for it. So I am going to download the actual stuff pack icon. It can be JPEG, PNG. PNGs usually don't have a background so that's good. 
and as far as I'm aware it can be any size but I wouldn't go too big I wouldn't go beyond, beyond this too 56 otherwise it might look a bit squash but then too small might look a bit pixelated so i just go for a png at 128 pixels but the most important thing is that it is a square if it is not a square your collection just won't show up i'll show you what to do if it's not a square open the picture and on windows 10 all you need to do is right click and hit resize and define custom dimensions untick aspect ratio and then make these two numbers the same. If by default they are quite different numbers, then your image isn't going to look very good and you need to pick another one. If it's just slightly off, say this was 130 and this was 128, changing one to the other um, would have minimal effects and would mean that it's that square that it needs to be to show up. So just make sure you have a, a decent looking square. I've now opened the tool called The Sims 2 Collection Creator and I'll put a link to it in the description. This is a really handy tool that allows you to make collections more easily and better than you can in the game. So to make a new one, you hit this star at the top that is to make a new collection. Name it, in this case it will be Sims 3 Master Suite Store. For the picture, you just hit these three dots to browse for an image. and go to where you saved it in my case it's my desktop but if it is not a jpeg it won't show up but that doesn't matter because it doesn't have to be a jpeg just here where it says jpeg images just click that and hit all files instead and select your png or whatever it is and open and it'll be there the collection time you're most likely going to want it to be both to show up on both residential and community lots um, or you could just make a residential or whatever, it's up to you. In this case, I want both. And then I hit this button to batch add all objects in the directory to a collection. So I'm going to open up my master suite folder and hit OK. And it will load all of the objects that are into the folder in it. I will hit OK. It's 25 items because you can't add fences because they're like walls and not an actual object. And that is it. I just need to save this collection file and give it a name as you can see I have a naming convention going on here and in this case it will be SPL5 master suite save and then it'll tell you file successfully saved so the last thing to do is go into game and make sure that collection appears properly and I like to rearrange it so that the items are of the same type are together within that collection so I'm in game now and I have opened my collections and it is usually not at the start. You uh, kind of have to go and find it and it can be in really random places and is here somewhere in the middle. Um, and to rearrange your collection folders, you press this little icon called organize collections, find where it is and just rearrange it. I'm going to put it to the start and then move it along a bit after my sims 3 expansion packs so as you can see i've been working away on my sims 3 packs so now i'm going to open it up and what i like to do is just shuffle these objects around um so that they are in the order that reflects the function sort catalog so to organize the items within a collection you press this organize items button and then you can just move them around here what you want to do is work backwards so because i want the comfort to be at the start you want to start by putting them last so this chair is actually already last um so the next in the comfort category would be this bed and so i'm just going to shove it to the end there and so on so i will just keep pushing them along until they are in the order i want and there you have it. That's my nicely organized collection for the Sims 3 Master stuff. I hope that's given you a good insight into some of the best practices to nicely organize your custom content, make those prices and stats balanced within the game, um, fix those crappy thumbnails, get that quartile placement working on all your items, um, good naming conventions. We've gone through through a lot. I might cover a couple of these things in really sn like a really snappy video series where the videos are like two minutes long of little things um, like that. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Again, don't get too focused on the fact that this was a pack for The Sim 3. It could have been anything. Like I said, it could have been build objects by 
the holy simole, um, whatever. It's the same kind of methods can apply. Don't get too hung up on the fact that it was conversions just for this example. Um, but yeah, as you can see, that is what is taking me so long and I've not even really been able to play in my own time, never mind um, make videos. Um, but I actually have some ideas that I am really excited for, so I hope you stick around. I am next going to be recording a video on how I set up my neighbourhoods to begin playing because really exciting. I have decided to do a let's play on The Sims 2 opening valley which is the neighbourhood recreation of the um, little opening cutscene when you open the game. It's super nostalgic and because The Sims are so recognisable um, and like the point is that uh, you get to see those Sims come to life. I won't miss my custom content so I will be playing that neighbourhood and those sims without my CC, just my mods, while I'm working on fixing up my CC like I've been doing shown in this video. Really painstaking, again I know this will be too much for the average person to do but I know even if you just pick one or two tips to follow from this video you will improve the organisation of your stuff and potentially increase the stability of your game and improve your loading times. I will also be doing a downloading The Sims 4 Cottage Living into The Sims 2 which is exciting. It's been about a month since it's released now, a bit over that actually. Um, so I'm just giving it a little bit longer for creators to get some good stuff out. Um, there's not too much out there yet but yeah I'm excited to do that. So I've got lots of ideas and videos will be coming more often hopefully. Um, I'll not say I hope you enjoyed this video but I hope you at least learn something useful from it let me know what it's taught you and what you can taught me do you have any other tips do you uh, do anything slightly differently um tell me why i'd love to know because you know i'm still in the process of doing mine so any more tips that i could pick up i would be happy to adopt as well so yeah let me know that and thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video for some hopefully some more fun stuff more gameplay oriented Bye guys!